So here's our initial version of the model. Uh, notice I've cleaned up the model just a little bit, straightening out some of the connectors and so on just to make it look a little bit better. But before we can do any analysis with our model, the first thing that we want to do is do some verification. In other words, what we'd like to know is we'd like to have some assurance that our model works like we expect it to work. And that's what we're going to do in this next video. As our first step in the verification process, we're going to evaluate the utilizations of the workstations and the operator. Recall from our static queuing model that we developed earlier, we estimated the utilizations for the cut, weld, shape, and finish workstations and for the operator. And so what we'd like to do first is check the corresponding utilizations from our Simio model. So of course we could run the model in interactive mode uh, and then we could evaluate using the uh, results tab, but that would only give us the results of a single run. So what we'd like to do first is develop an experiment just to test those utilizations. So to do that, we'll go to the Project Home tab and create our new experiment. And you can see here we've created experiment number one. And by default, uh, we're going to run for 10 replications. Note also that I've set the running, run ending time to be 8,000 hours. Uh, this was set pretty arbitrarily. I recall also that we said that we're going to assume that the flexible manufacturing cell works eight hours a day and so I just picked uh, arbitrarily 1,000 days for the run length. So to get started let's create uh, responses for each of the utilizations that we're interested in. So I'll click on add response and I will just name it cut util oops uh, representing the utilization of the cut station so I'll pull up the expression builder, cut capacity scheduled utilization. And so now what will be reported is, and as the response, is the utilization of the cut workstation. Similarly, I will add the uh, response for the weld utilization. And the corresponding expression is weld capacity, oops, Capacity, let's try that again. Capacity scheduled utilization. The shape workstation. And we'll get the shape. Uh, capacity scheduled utilization. Finally, the finish station. and finish capacity scheduled utilization and for the operator we want the same utilization but it's calculated just a little bit differently because we have uh, using the worker object we have a population of potential workers so we're going to do the operator let's just call it OPER util and we're going to pull up the operator and instead of going directly to capacity, we need to go to the population uh, component. Then we get to capacity and scheduled utilization. And so you can see that the expression incorporates this, uh, the population component. So now we have our responses for the utilization, the cut, weld, shape, finish, operator utilization, and we can run the model. And you can see running for 8,000 hours, it runs uh, fairly quickly and you can see the results coming up for our 10 replications. So we have our initial results in terms of the utilizations for our four uh, stations in our operator and let's compare those to what we expected from our static queuing analysis. So let me slide this down here a little bit and we have our expected utilizations of 80.5, 81, 62, 85.5 and for the operator 87.5 and you can see from these numbers that we are roughly in the ballpark but we're not quite at what we expected so the question is why are we not at what we expected now clearly one explanation could be that we simply haven't run enough replications so if I look at my 10 replications and then look at the responses so for example the cut utilization response you can see in the SMORE plot that we have a fairly wide range of values uh, uh, of possible values so one thing that we could easily do and that 
is generally the first thing that we try in this case is simply increase the number of replications. And so let's increase the number of replications from 10 to 50 uh, and see what kind of res response that has. So after fast forwarding a little bit, you can see that our utilizations did change, but they didn't change all that much. If we go and look at the response results, as we would expect, the confidence intervals and the, the range of possible values has tightened up quite a bit, but we're still not really where we expect it to be. And so in this case, we need to look for another possible explanation uh, other than we simply haven't run enough replications. So for queuing network type models, the next thing that I tend to look at is the number of, of entities in the system and the corresponding time in system. So if we go to the pivot grid, we can scroll down and you can see because we define different instances of the entity, we uh, Simio tracks this information separately by part type. And so we can see that we have an average of 19 uh, part type A, 28 part type B, uh, 21.58 part type C, and so on in the system. Also, when we look at the time in system, uh, we can see that the average part type A spends 385 hours in the system, which is a little bit concerning. It's a little bit more than we would normally expect. And so one of the clues or one of the things that we're interested in looking at in a little bit more detail is the amount of WIP or work in process and the time that the parts spend in the system. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a response so that we can track the number of entities in the system, or what I'll refer to as the WIP, or work in process. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a Simio state statistic based on the number of entities in the system. So roughly what I need to do is define the state. When a part arrives, I need to increment that state. When a part leaves or goes through the sync station, I need to decrement that state and then I need to tell Simio to track that state as a state statistic. So let's do that. So first thing we will go to the definitions tab and the state uh, selection and say we want to create a new integer state that we will call WIP. And so we've created an integer state uh, that will track how many entities are in the system uh, as the experiment runs. So we go back to the facility and now we need to put the logic in to increment the the state value whenever a part arrives and to decrement the state value whenever a part ships. So to do that I'm going to go to the object and use the uh, state assignments property and so I will open the repeat and add I want to assign a value to the whip state and I want to add whip plus one. So whenever an entity arrives, I will uh, increment the value from whip to whip plus one. Similarly, when an entity ships, I can use the state assignment property here and do the reverse. So I'm going to set the whip state equal to whip minus one. And so now when an entity arrives, the state assignment um, will increment the WIP value and when an entity departs the state assignment will uh, correspondingly decrement the state uh, accordingly. And so the next step is to define the corresponding state statistic. So we have a value uh, that, that Simio will track as the simulation runs but I need to tell Simio that I'd like to uh, track that value. So I create a state statistic. Let's call it num in sys. And we will then uh, specify the state variable to watch is whip. So now when I go back to my experiment, and let's reduce this back down to 10 so it can run in a reasonable time. And we can run our experiment. And now we should have a new user defined state statistic that tracks the total number, or the, the, the average number of entities in the system as the system runs. So we go to our um, pivot grid and here you can see our number in system state statistic. So the average value is 82.32 and the final value is 170. So when I look at these values, the average and the final value, one thing that immediately jumps out 
uh, is that the average value is approximately one half of the final value. And one of the explanations, or one of the potential explanations for that, for a queuing type system, is that the WIP is increasing steadily as the simulation runs. So for example, if I have time uh, here on the horizontal axis, and we have a WIP behavior that looks like this, continuously increasing, you would see we would have this phenomenon where the final value here, the average value here, is approximately one half of the final value. Again, which is indicative of the WIP increasing steadily uh, as the simulation runs. Now, we don't know that's what's happening, but that's certainly one potential explanation. And such is the nature of doing simulation modeling verification is that it, you don't exactly know what's going on, and so your task is to try to uh, deduce what's going on from the data. So one thing that we could do here, uh, if we wanted to further evaluate, is we could go back and run longer. So we're running for 8,000 hours, and we could increase this, say, to 16,000 hours, so we could double the run length, and we could experiment and see if we come up with that same behavior of WIP, where the expected or the average value is approximately one half of the final value. And this is something that you should, you should try. But I will tell you in advance that that's exactly what happened. If you increase to 16,000 hours, you're going to see that same basic phenomenon. So what that tells us, uh, at least it gives us some amount of evidence that there's another problem in the model. In other words, we're not going to be able to keep up with the workload that's arriving. So when we go back to our um, queuing model, our static model, uh, either we've done something wrong in our static model, we've done something wrong in our simulation model, or we're making an invalid assumption. Which do you think it is? Well, in this case, it turns out that we're making an invalid assumption. And the invalid assumption we're making has to do with the operator. Recall from our simulation model that each one of the stations requires the operator to set up so we go to our cut station and we have a setup process, setup time, and a teardown time. And what our static model does not account for is the fact that the cut and weld station, for example, could both need the operator at the same time. So in other words, perhaps the cut station needs the operator to unload or tear down, and the weld station needs the operator to set up. One of those two stations is going to have to wait, and that waiting time is what's called operator interference, and that's going to cause the stations, the parts, uh, to stay on the stations longer than they ordinarily would. So how can we test this? Well, one easy way we can test this is we can just increase the number of operators available so that there's an operator available for each station. So if I go to the operator object, go to the population set of properties and just change this value to 4, that's telling Simio that we want to have 4 operators available. And because we have 4 workstations, that should totally eliminate the operator interference and let us evaluate whether that's what's causing our problem. So before we run our Simio model, let's update our queuing, static queuing model accordingly. So recall that we have the capacity of each one of our resources here in column B, and so I can simply change that to 4 for the operator, and now what we would expect is 21.9% uh, utilization because I have 4 operators. So I made the change in our Simio model, I can then go back to our experiment, reset, and run the model. And we will compare the results we're getting to our expectation. And you can see as the model runs, it certainly looks like our experimentally determined values from 10 replications are, are, are quite close to what we expect from the static model. So at this point, we could continue to do some additional experimentation, but we're going to assume that our model uh, now is verified because the model now behaves very, very similar to our expectation. And we could run longer and we could run more replications and demonstrate that as we run, these response values, in fact, do get closer and closer to the uh, expected values. And this is something that you should definitely try on your own. This also demonstrates where the static queuing model uh, fails us in this case, because there's no way that the model, the way we've developed it, can account for the operator interference. Whereas the simulation model, by design, 
automatically accounts for that uh, for that interference.